Hello, in this video I'm going to be reviewing the Asus CX5 Chromebook. I thought I'd take advantage of Black Friday and I got this from Amazon in the UK for £599. Unfortunately this model is no longer available but they do, they do have the i3 model. This is the Asus CX5 with the Intel i5 quad core processor. So this is a super fast 11th generation Chromebook. Whether you need such a Chromebook with that much power, we'll look at a little later in the video. And we'll also look at the stylus later on in the video. And we'll also look at some of the issues I've had with this Chromebook, which have now been resolved. So it's a great Chromebook. When we look at the build quality first, I will obviously say it's a tad heavy. And that's because this is a 15.6 inch laptop display so if you're looking for a chromebook to use out on the go when you're move around moving around i wouldn't necessarily recommend this chromebook this chromebook's much better if you want a chromebook for your home it will sit well on your on a desk and it's also fine on your lap as well so it's fine it, it's an aluminium style well it is aluminium lid but it feels more I don't know, like a ceramic type feel to it. Um, it's lovely, the lid. Underneath is plastic, which is fine. It's all white and it's all white on the lid. What I love is it does look stunning. It's a totally different way of Asus Chromebooks compared to when they used to give us silver aluminium bodies. I really do like the design. When you open it up, you get a black keyboard and I really like that texture. The black keyboard you get and it's got a sort of rubber feel to it has got a really, really nice texture. So that's great. Um, so in relation to build quality, I think that's really all you would need to know. Um, I'll quickly go over the ports while we're looking at build quality. We've got a micro SD slot there. And we've got a HDMI port there, which is really good. That comes in handy for me, and I'm sure it comes in handy for a lot of people. And it, there's also a USB-C on that side as well. And on the other side, it's got a microphone, um, um, headphone jack. It's got a USB-A if you've got older peripherals. And it's also got a USB-C there as well and it's obviously got the volume up and down and the power switch so the build quality i love i the contrast of the black to white is stunning it's really when it comes to looks i absolutely love this laptop i do apologize for the squeaky chair i can't do much about that um, so in in relation to the display as i says it's a 15.6 inch display it's full HD, which is fine. You don't need anything more than that. It's obviously got an IPS panel um, and it's fine. It's not super bright, but it's nothing to worry about either. As I says, this laptop isn't really used, made for using outside. So if you was using this outside in the direct sunlight, you would struggle to see it. But inside, it's fine. If you're next to a really bright window, you, you would have possibly have problems. But overall, it's fine. I've got no problem with the display at all it's absolutely fine when it comes to the trackpad it's really big which is fine if you don't if you're not clicking there's still a little click but it doesn't create a problem at all um, the keyboard's nice because it's a larger laptop with 15.6 inch keyboard i've never used a laptop before with a separate numeric number pad now obviously it's great to have one so you've got a separate number pad there it's slight the keys are slightly narrow so although it's much better than typing with numbers up here certainly if you touch type if you touch type you'll really be able to take advantage of them numeric keys but they are narrow i've tried and it works fine but i am a bit more aware of what keys i'm pressing so it's it's good to have obviously the one thing i would say the keyboard is great but it does take some getting used to when i first got the chromebook i was like Oh no, I hate the keyboard. And the reason why is if you've never used a keyboard with a touchpad before, it's naturally, it's just, you don't think about it. When you open up your laptop, you go straight into typing and your hands are at the middle of the laptop. It's just a natural thing that you do. The problem is obviously that would all be out of sync because of where you are. So you've got to get used to having your arm hands more over this side. And that took me about a day 
So I think it will take some time. Some people might get used to it straight away, certainly if you've had a laptop with a numeric number pad before. If you haven't, it does take some time to get used to the fact that your hands need to be over this side. But once you've done that, typing is great. But like I said, at first you might think, oh, I've made a mistake. Certainly if you brought a laptop for typing, it will take some time. So don't let it worry you, I'm sure you'll be fine. Now, in relation to if you touch typing, what's really good, because when you touch type, you've naturally got your hand, your fingers on certain keys, and that naturally says where your palms will sit. And the palms sit either side of the touchpad, which is really nice to see. But even if you don't touch type, and you do touch the touchpad when you're typing, it doesn't affect it, it, it notices that you're typing, so it's absolutely fine. The, back, the keyboard is backlit as well, which is nice, and they've used black keys, which is much better when you've got a backlit keyboard because it shows much more. So all that's fine. In relation to typing, fine. Trackpad is fine, it's nice and big. The display is fine. Now we look at the fact that this is not just a laptop, it is a hybrid Chromebook, so that means you can use it as a tablet, like that, or you can use it in temp mode. Personally, I've never been a massive fan of hybrid Chromebooks, but they are good, it depends on what you're using them for. So that would be temp mode on your desk like that. However, the best way I prefer to use them is like that on a desk. And then if I'm at night, it's not even just on a desk, I can put it on the side of my settee and I can have Spotify on here with some Bluetooth headphones and I can choose all the different songs without the keyboard getting in the way. So that's why I like hybrids, but I'm sure everybody likes other different things. They're good in tablet mode. Problem is if you've got it in tablet mode, you'd constantly be able to go like that, which I don't think is very practical or holding it and they're quite heavy. So I do think it's much better if you have them like that. The good thing is the hinges are really good. When you close it, it's not a, it hasn't got a magnet like say for the Asus C302, for example. So it can, but it's still really sturdy. Comparing this to the Asus 713 Chromebook that I reviewed a couple of months ago, this is much more sturdier when it comes to having it in tablet mode. The Asus 713 seemed really flimsy. So it's really good for that, I do like that. One issue I do have with Chrome OS tablets, unless the actual whole of the Chromebook is completely slab-like, you're going to get these grooves here, and they do, they, they are a bit, off putting. That being said, the grooves on this one are actually not that bad at all compared to some of them I've used. Some of them I've used look awful with the massive grooves. But and also on this laptop, it makes sense that they haven't used a slab like look on the bottom of the laptop. And the reason for that is that there's speakers on either side of the laptop there and there, and it's got vents there so the sound comes out underneath and at the side and at the side that's why it's slightly curved so there's practical sense why they've done that as well using this with android apps is really nice and that's because you've got a large touch screen display and it's 15.6 inches and it is really nice so i do like that it's good with linux as well so when we look at things like performance because this is an intel i5 with a quad core processor this is going to cope with anything you throw at it well it will cope with anything you throw at it, as long as Chrome OS can cope with what you throw at it. So that's the only thing at the moment. At present, I'm not too sure whether you need an Intel i5 11th generation processor. If you want one, then by all means, if you want the fastest, go out and get one. But this model is also available in the Intel i3 dual core processor and that will cope with anything Chrome OS can do at the moment. So I wouldn't say you necessarily need this Intel i5 quad core. The Intel i3 dual core will work just fine as well. For an example of that, I tried to install a game called City Skylines on my on Steam on my Asus Chromebox and it didn't work. It, it, when it was trying to load a new map, it would jutter halfway through and it just couldn't get past that point. I was convinced that's because my Chromebox has eMMC storage. So I thought maybe with this, with the SSD storage, it would, but it's the same problem. It juddered at a certain point and then it crashed. I'm not saying you can't play all games on Steam. You can, but not advanced games at the moment. So even though this is an Intel i5 quad core, it still can't cope with that loading of the map. That being said, 
It's the same with Windows. I've played this game a lot. So even on Microsoft Windows, it gets to a certain stage loading a map and it jutters on there as well. So it's obviously a bottleneck in the game where it's loading lots of information. The difference is it does actually load on Windows. If you do want to play the game on your Chromebook, then I'd recommend using NVIDIA GeForce Now. I play on my Chromebox and it works fine. And that juttering where I'm talking about is loading the map. On the NVIDIA GeForce Now, it loads the map literally in about 30 seconds and that's amazing doesn't takes about five minutes on a windows pc on this it got to about two minutes and it just couldn't get past that stage so if you are into gaming at the moment and you can't do it locally with steam definitely use nvidia geforce now now obviously steam is going to be coming out even more in the future steam have been working on their steam deck which is a handheld console that uses Linux, so it makes sense that they most likely will use something to do with that when Steam comes out more compatible with the Chromebook, and then hopefully that would work. That being said, this is an Intel i5 quad core, so you'd expect it to be great, but then you've got to think, well, what about the graphics card? So that's the problem with Steam in the future, when we are with Chromebooks in the future what will we need in terms of graphics cards? Because I still think you would need a graphics card. An Intel i5 quad core is super powerful, but if the game requires a graphics card, it's gonna struggle. So at the moment with what's available, I don't think an Intel i5 quad core is necessary. I think you'll be fine with the dual core and you'd be spending less as well if you go for the dual core. The only thing is obviously this, the i5 comes with 256 gigabyte of storage and the i3 comes with 128 gigabyte of storage, so it's half the storage. As I've said, this is a really fast Chromebook and where the SSD storage comes into play is when you're installing Linux apps or Android apps or even removing Linux apps and removing Android apps. It's really fast and that's not the processor that's the SSD storage because it's so much quicker to run. For example, I did a video on my YouTube channel on my Asus Chromebox to show you how to install a Linux app store. And during that video, I kept on saying, right, well, I'm gonna have to pause so I cut down the video so you're not waiting around. And I kept coming back saying, oh, that took about five minutes, that part, and that part took about four minutes. Installing a Linux app store on this actual laptop took me about a minute, really fast, so five minutes, and then a few more minutes down to about a minute and then about 40 seconds. So crazily fast when it comes to the SSD. And I would definitely recommend if you are going for a medium spec or high spec Chromebook today, certainly in 2021 and going forward, SSD is something good to look at because when Steam does become more compatible, having SSD will certainly help. Certainly if the game needs to load a lot of data from the storage. So I definitely recommend that. So it's good for that. So before I get onto the stylus, which come with it, which I was very happy about, I will mention something that I did have a bit of an issue with, and this was the sound quality. Now I'm not saying the sound quality isn't good. The sound quality is great when it works. However, when I first bought it, I played a song, Ocean Drive, and that song's got treble, it's got mid-range, and it's got bass, so it's good to test the speakers. And it sounded good, but then it had this real strange scenario where it sounded as if just the music was coming from that right speaker, to that speaker, to this speaker here. Sorry, I'm thinking that's the left speaker to the right speaker. And the sound kept on feeling like it was moving from one to the next, but it was quite intermittent. So it was very hard to understand what was going on. And I, I, I was well aware that the song definitely doesn't have a fade from left to right, but that's what it sounded like. It sounded quite intentional and it was really off-putting. So I played a few other songs and exactly the same scenario. It wasn't just that it was going from left to right, it was creating all different sounds. So at one time the sound was great, but then it was going all weird really off-putting, something I wouldn't be able to actually cope with. So I looked online and there was a discussion about the Asus CX CX5 and issues around sound. Some people were saying it was a speaker issue, which I don't think see how it could be because they sounded fine at times and not at others. That doesn't suggest a speaker issue. Other people uh, suggested it was software and that's definitely what it was. The problem was, I had already was updated to the latest operating system. When I installed Chrome OS on this laptop, and it definitely didn't used to do it previously, it actually, part of that 
set an up stage, checked for an update, and went as an update, and it did the update as part of the setup process. I quite like that. Hopefully, that's a lot they're going to be like with all Chromebooks going forward. Rather than setting it up, then it's saying there's an update. So this was already up to date, um, and it did. It was on Chrome OS 94, and there's no other updates to take place. So I used a function to report the issue to Google, which is what someone else recommended they they did with theirs, and that. Obviously, I'm not saying me reporting it sorted it because I'm sure they were already aware of it. I just thought it would be good to report it as well. So they're aware that these problems are still taking place. Now, it was still happening. And in, on that evening, when I was using Spotify on my sofa in that mode, like I says, which I quite like, I had to put on my Bluetooth headphones, which if I'm being honest with you, I would have done anyway. If I'm listening to music seriously, I, when I do listen to music, I'm usually listening to music for about a good four hours, even longer. So I'd always put on Bluetooth headphones anyway. But the speakers on this are perfectly capable to give you a good sound when it comes to music, if they were working correctly. So that wouldn't work. But then the next day, it did receive an update. It was still obviously Chrome OS 94, it was more of a patch, and that has fixed the problem. So it's obviously something they're aware of. Perhaps it's something that it happens overnight rather than doing it straight away or whether you do have to report it and then they recognize that your laptop needs to get uh, a patch. So one thing I would say, if you do buy this and you realize you've got an issue with the speakers, definitely report it to Google and definitely give it a couple of days because then it's fixed. And it is fixed now, it's absolutely fine. Now, I think that the issue was this, this sound is being created with Harman Kardon. Harman Kardon's a well-known audio company that have been around for many, many years. I can remember even when I was 17 looking for an amplifier, Harman Kardon was around, so they've been around for years. Um, and that's showing my age now. So I think it's something to do with their technology, and I think they've done it in a certain way, and it wasn't quite working, and that's why we had this problem, which has now been resolved. And it's to do with, this isn't to do with the problem now, this is something else about the audio on this laptop. They've designed it so it's best when it's on a flat surface. So when it's on a desk, it sounds nice and controlled and bassy. And when it's on your lap, it also sounds nice and controlled and bassy. And when you've got it in tablet mode, because them speak events there are touching against the lid, it sounds nice and controlled and bassy, and it's fine. When I say bassy, I don't mean super bassy, but it's bassy enough. But the minute you put it into temp mode or that mode, that mode, anywhere where the speakers don't have a flat surface to be against, it doesn't sound so great. It still sounds fine, but you've got to accept the fact it is, it's a different sound. To me, it sounds slightly less controlled and it sounds like the bass, which is obviously quite artificial which proves it's it's there but they, they, they've made it so the sur touch of the surface has helped to bring across a bass sound to it so it's an artificial bass sound which works really well but when you do have it open and it's not touching anything that bass has gone a bit so it's a tad tinnier so be prepared if you're buying one that the sound quality not necessarily it's bad sound quality it's a different sound when you've not got it flat against the surface either in tablet to tablet mode or like that on your lap or on a desk you don't get the same sound but overall the sound's great and when it comes to playing games the sound is great for playing games so it's really good for that and it's also good for music as well the sound is you, you've just got to be aware that you might have that issue so now I come on to the next one which is the stylus now I wasn't 100% sure whether I would get a stylus um, because it wasn't 100% clear in the listing, it does say obviously this Chromebook is compatible with stylus, but when you look on the Asus website, it does say, um, I can't remember the exact words, but the wording basically is suggesting that not all of them will come. Specific models, for example, in asterisk next to the stylus. So with this, I wasn't expecting it. And I think it's possibly because I got the Intel i5 version. I don't know if you do get it with the Intel i3. So if you are buying this Chromebook, please make sure you check if the stylus is important that you get that before buying. Now, the good thing is you, it comes with two of these. Now, I've checked them and they are identical as far as I can see, and it's a magnet. And it, you can put it anywhere on the laptop to an extent, 
but it's made like for example you can put it there but it's not very sturdy it's actually made for the micro sd slot so when you come to use a micro sd slot it wouldn't be as beneficial but because it's got quite a lot of storage i can't imagine you doing that anytime soon but that fits into the micro sd slot so one it's got a little groove to fit into the sd slot and also it's got it's magnetized so it fits in really nicely and then you can simply get your pen and slip it in it's not super robust you do have to do it slow slightly like that but see it's not perfect but once it's in let me just put it in once it's in you've got your pen attached to your chromebook which is really good don't get me wrong like i said it, it's not a super strong magnet so it comes off and if you pulled that quickly like that it's fine but then if you pulled it at a slight angle it would just come off like that so it is fine and essentially you could use the pen with that if it's somewhat very quick and just leave the magnet on and then put it back so that's a really nice touch i like that because with my pixel slate it doesn't have that so i'm constantly losing my pen and i'm having to go and find my pen to use the pixel slate when it comes to the pen i've used it and um, I, 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 it's what I do like. It, it's sensitive to the screen, so if you're if you if you're doing it slowly, it's it, it's thin. But if you put a bit more pressure, it goes thicker. So it it's good for that. So it isn't just a pen that you can you've got no control over whatsoever. It does depending on your pressure change. So if you're using different art programs, it's really good for that for sketching. I prefer this such to the pixel pen. And that's because the pixel pen was slightly fatter so it didn't feel 100 percent natural to hold this pen feels just like a pen and it, it's quite light so I, it's nice it's really nice i've tried it i'm not the best oh, well i'm not a good drawer at all um but i like doodling i do i do enjoy doodling it just takes the time away and it is really nice so it's a great touch whether you get it with your one is um the one you buy is different but if not you can buy it as an additional extra and it is really nice when it comes to the battery it's exactly the same battery that the pixel slate uses so i think it's triple a i think that battery type is um oh it's double a double a it's got here so it's a double a double a battery nice and slim you just pop it in and it's fine and yeah, just, I do like that. And it does add a bit of extra. When you consider I got this for £599, bearing in mind that wasn't a Black Friday. So what the i5 would cost normally in the UK and the USA, I'm not 100% certain. The i3 model was going for 499 but I think normally it goes to 599 So in the UK, I think the i3 model you can get for about 599 and in the US, I think it's $579. So roughly around that price. Diantel i5 will cost a lot more. Also, like I said, do bear in mind, I don't know if you get this pen with each. What I do like about this pen as well is that little extra slot you get, which is nice. That is really nice. And I will take advantage of that because it stops you losing the pen. So overall, would I recommend buying this Chromebook? In sense of the design, it's gorgeous. It's simply stunning. I love the white outer casing and the contrast between the black inside. The sound, once it's got that problem fixed, is perfectly fine. I love the fact that it's got really nice, strong hinges. That's really good. It's great for gaming if you use an NVIDIA GeForce now because of the 15.6 inch display. The keyboard is great, but you do need to accept it may take you some time to get used to the keyboard simply because of the fact you've got the keys there. Um, so you wouldn't be in the center like you normally would. You've got to get used to the idea that you need to move your hands slightly over. But once you do that, and it did take me a day, maybe a bit longer to get really used to that. Now it's just automatic. You don't even have to think about it. It's fine. The keyboard's absolutely fine. So if you are looking for a laptop with a 15.6 inch display, I would definitely recommend this because it's, as far as I'm concerned, I think it's the best looking 15.6 inch Chromebook I've seen. Definitely looks wise, performance wise, this is amazing. 11th generation, 
Intel i5, quad core, but like I says, get the Intel i3 i dual core and you'll have just all the performance you need from that as well. I would recommend this Chromebook. It took me a few days to fall in love with it and that was mainly because of the keyboard. It took me a while to get used to the keyboard and the issue with the sound. It took me a while to get used to get, get and making sure once the update worked that it was not going to go back to its old self and it hasn't. So I am slowly falling in love with this. It wasn't an immediate attraction. I, I thought it would be because, but because of them issues, but I love the stylus, it's really great. Um, the performance is fantastic. It comes with eight gigabyte of RAM, 256 gigabyte SSD, and the Intel i3, again, eight gigabyte of RAM. I don't think there's a four gigabyte. If there is, I'd avoid it with an Intel i3, waste, waste of time. Um, and the Intel i3, 128 gigabyte SSD, the SSD storage, you can really tell the difference, it's great. So I would recommend this Chromebook. It's not for everyone, like I says, it is heavy. So this is a Chromebook that you want to use at home. Um, but yes, overall, I, I would recommend it. And I think for the price, obviously I got this in a Black Friday deal, but at the normal price for what you're getting, I think, I think it's pretty good. One thing I would say about the fans, and maybe this is because it's the quad core, Using it normally, there's no fan noise at all, very, very rarely. But when you do start taking, so when I was trying to install Steam games, I could really hear the fans and they were quite noticeable. More noticeable than my Acer 713. But that being said, my Acer 713 was an i3 processor and I think it was the 10th generation, so a previous generation. So maybe it didn't need as much a fan noise for that. So do bear in mind, the more powerful the laptop you buy, the more you've got to accept the fact that you may get fan noise, not all the time, just when you're playing more advanced games perhaps. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, please like below and subscribe to the channel for future videos. And thanks for watching.